Hello, this is Inju Moon working with Ali Mirzazadeh, and I will be presenting our project for this week 2021. The Smart Shin Guards, a dry electrode bioimpedance measurement device for injury and fatigue analysis. The purpose behind this project is to show health metrics for soccer players and physiologists for applications like injury tracking or fatigue assessment. The novelty behind this idea is that there are very little soccer-specific related wearables, uh, but they have been growing in demand uh, as a trend lately. In fact, one team even claims that the cornerstone of their success was in their wearables. Additionally, dry bioimpedance measurements are relatively new to the field, and I've seen little development due to the high contact impedance between electrodes and skin. Uh, and there are very little work done utilizing bioimpedance to measure calf fatigue specifically. So as shown here, once again, there are, there's very little work done on utilizing that bioimpedance data for measuring calf fatigue. There was a study done in the University of Alabama where bicep fatigue was measured. And you can see that on the, uh, the graphs on the left, there was our resistance, reactance, and phase measurements of patients doing bicep curls. Additionally, there was a uh, one on joint assessment here at Tech, uh, where you measure the edema or the amount of swelling within ankle joints. Uh, however, calf fatigue specifically, um, and with dry electrodes in a wearable form factor, has little to no work done. So here is our methodology behind our implementation of the shin curve. We're using a tetrapolar electrode configuration for bioimpedance using the AD5933. This new chip was recently developed uh, within the past couple of years and enables us to measure high impedances that allow for the use of dry electrodes. Uh, the tetrapolar configuration you can see in the very top picture is where there are two pairs of electrodes, the outside pair and inside pair. The outside pair applies power to the tissue while the inside pair measures the voltage drop across the tissue. This allows for a constant voltage source to be used for the outside pair, rather than a constant current source, which can generally be harder to maintain. The inside pair's measurement can also be compared to the outside pair's measurement of uh, bioimpedance in order to estimate the difference, which would be the impedance of the skin electrode interface. And this can be really useful for mitigating inconsistencies created by motion artifact noise and moving electrodes. The bioimpedance measurement itself uses both low frequency and high frequency signals to provide insight into tissue structure. For example, more swelling or blood flow into the tissue will cause low frequency bioimpedance to decrease and thus patterns in the measured data can give us information on a subject's fitness. Our physical implementation consists of four long aluminum strips uh, used as our dry electrodes. Those four are glued to the inside of the shin guard straps. These straps, there are these strips provide enough surface area for good contact, as well as provide some rigidity with the help of the elastic strap for good pressure onto the skin, which those two are the most important for reducing skin contact uh, electrode in impedance, is good, good contact and good uh, pressure. Thin wire is then threaded through the straps of the shin guard to allow for a wider range of motion when using the device. Here are our results. Um, they show that the measured impedance of our physical implementation was low enough to see significant changes in bioimpedance. As you can see from the graph on the right, the total impedance that we measured was under still 2000 ohms, um, whereas wet gel electrodes have a measured skin contact impedance of roughly 10,000 ohms. So this is performing actually better than wet gel electrodes. Additionally, there we have a uh, accelerometer in the device, and as the subject moves, each step can be segmented to provide data on both loaded and unloaded tissue. Uh, from this, we've managed to find patterns in both, both the low frequency and high frequency data that indicates different amounts of blood flow or swelling in all the subjects that we were uh, testing, who all had different fitness levels. Um, finally, for us, the most important thing was that uh, our physical implementation was structurally stable enough to see multiple times uh, field testing and that the quality of the data did not. For the future of this project, we've considered several routes. 
uh, one of which was wireless charging. This would kind of integrate the device more into the shin guard seamlessly and allow for waterproof or contact proof uh, outdoor usage, much more realistic expectation for something being used by soccer players. Um, this would also allow for not having the, not having the user having to worry about uh, taking out the battery or recharging them because it would all be wireless charging. It would be much more easy to pick up. Um, other ideas we've had though are other wearables such as an athletic sleeve or different types of implementation such as woven conductors or um, textile electrodes. So for those other wearables, we've considered the athletic sleeve pretty heavily. And as a matter of fact, I think we'll be going towards that um, very soon. But the idea behind the athletic sleeve is that this wearable form factor is a lot more universal. This can be applied to both the arm or the leg and offer both segment and joint data. Um, whereas the other optimizations also uh, we've considered are textile electrodes. Uh, those are conductive fabric or conductive thread that we can knead or um, embroider into such, such a sleeve, like the athletic sleeve that we, I had mentioned earlier. And um, some studies have even shown that the, the conductive fabric actually provides better data, higher quality data of the bioimpedance uh, than typical dry electrodes or wet gel electrodes do. So this may provide some uh, future avenues we can take and uh, improvements upon this project. Thank you.